good. Uh, so, uh, my, my name is Don Jonsson. Uh, I am uh, daily uh, uh, working with software installations uh, using EasyBuild uh, on the HPC clusters and risk clusters. And I'm physically located in, at the UIT. Um, okay. Uh, so, uh, Danias, uh, uh, so I, uh, should I just continue with my presentation? Or? Yes, yes, please. Okay, good. Um, so uh, I hope you can find there should be a link in the document uh, in the in the right and documentation. Uh, so I will just follow this our documentation, um, and uh, hopefully this will be a hands-on, and you should be able to uh, follow along. And we should try just to install a simple package and then uh, maybe make some modification to it also. Uh, I want to start by saying that this should work in principle on Saga, uh, Fram, and Betsy. Uh, unfortunately, uh, maybe on other systems, uh, there's one big dependency. So maybe. You could check just that uh, if I just can type module avail. All, all these installations will depend on that there is this version uh, of R, in particular these two versions which, which we are going to use as dependencies. Uh, and these are this is a big package, so uh, it will take hours if you would try to build it as part of this. Uh, so that was not, it not it will not be possible. That's maybe uh, unfortunate. And then uh, I noted uh, on my laptop, this took the examples took one minute to build. Uh, but on Saga, when there was high load, it took 20 minutes. And that's uh, then you might not be able to complete your builds. So maybe if you have uh, it's possible for you, you, I would suggest you log into Fram or uh, Betsy. Um, another thing I noted was that uh, there seems to be something odd on RAM login node 2. I got asked for passwords there, even though uh, I have SSH keys. So if that is a problem for you, you might ex may explicitly specify maybe like login 1 instead. Uh, like this. And then you should be able to log in on maybe login one or three, if that for some reason uh, you also have problems with the login two on top. Okay, so let's start with easy build. So this is the main uh, tool and framework we are using to install uh, the system-wide software stack and, mod and, and, and modules along. Uh, and this is maybe a tool that's most useful for people like me, like system administrators. But it can also be useful for you as a user, and maybe three different scenarios. Uh, there's something that's not just installed, and we don't install it, but there exists already an easy config uh, for that particular software. And then uh, it should be normally quite easy to install it for you. Um, maybe there is an easy config, but uh, we might, there is maybe a new version or something like this, which we not yet install because there's not an official version yet. Or for some reason, maybe you need to use another compiler. And maybe for advanced users, uh, uh, you, you could uh, write your own. Uh, so we will try to cover the first two here in this session. Uh, so a little bit of easy build. So easy build, uh, as I said, is maybe mostly useful for uh, if you want to have a big uh, HPC stack installed. Um, it's built from source. Uh, it uh, has a lot of automation. It's very good for reproducibility. It has automatic dependency resolution. And it will also generate modules for, for you. 
which is uh, uh, convenient for for us. Uh, so uh, this reproducibility comes from that uh, the builds are actually very specific with versions. So this both the strengths and also can make it difficult to actually specify builds because you need to be very specific of all the versions or all the dependencies. Uh, and this particular package we try to install uh, today is called uh, RJAX. Um, um, I'm not sure if this is the maybe a, the most useful thing you would do because this is a, kind of an R module extension, I think. I'm very familiar with it. Uh, the good thing was with this one was it had only two dependencies, but uh, one of them, unfortunately, is a very big one, and it is R itself. So typically, uh, package names will be called uh, with the name of the software, the version, so RJAX 412, and then there would be the toolchain used to build the, the software. So that would be typically compiler or uh, linear algebra packages. I would say maybe a little bit more in detail about toolchains later. Uh, and in this particular case, it also depends on R. Uh, so that's also specified. Uh, there can be many more dependencies, but usually uh, there is only the main package and the uh, toolchain that's in, included in the version. So, so we will start uh, by maybe cleaning the environment to just be sure. So module purge, don't have any modules loaded. And then we need to load the easy build module. So module, maybe we can just see what versions are available first. When you do module avail, it's case insensitive, so you don't need to. Uh, and now this, we have this version installed. Uh, and now you can load it like this. And the tab completion works. So if I just type tab there, and forward slash and then tab again don't need to type as much uh, we could maybe ver verify that we indeed have uh, easy build available to us that seems to be correct uh, and in in the, if you actually were interested in having the R Jags uh, package installed, you might actually first try and see if it were already on the system. So, um, module fail, or jags, not found. Okay, so let's install it. Uh, so, uh, and then next step is to see if uh, there is actually uh, an easy uh, config uh, for this uh, package. So you can use the option search file name. This is also a shorter version that capital minus S. And then the name. And um, it can take some time. And you will get, should get the list like this. So in this time, uh, there was quite a few versions here. And um, normally, I guess you would uh, be interested maybe in the latest version. But in the example here, uh, we will uh, install the 4.12 version with the FOSS 2021 B2 chain. And this, it has a dependency also on this uh, R installation. This R installation is very big because it includes a lot of R packages also. Um, okay. Then, so, um, would you be would you be telling more about what this first means? What, what, what does that mean? Those. Um, uh, I I, yeah. I was planning to talk more about that uh, uh, later. Uh, so. So uh, in in short, uh, FOSS in, in terminology is, is the 
compiler tool chain used. Uh, in this time, uh, it's the GCC compiler that's going to be used. Um, and there's also included some linear algebra package and open MPI and uh, some maths libraries, I believe. Um, in principle, now we should be able, we could install uh, directly, maybe, well, uh, like this. Uh, but I find it always useful uh, to break this down in in, uh, in smaller steps. Uh, and to start with, to fetch uh, the source files. Uh, and uh, because this is typically something that's the most common thing that goes wrong, maybe that the source repository has changed names or something like this, uh, or the repository might not even exist anymore when you're in trouble. But okay, so let's try this. Um, so that looks uh, complete, it looks good. Um, we can uh, try and verify that we actually did get this one. So by default, um, if you don't specify any more uh, from easy build, it will put things in, in the home folder under the folder dot local slash easy build the sources in, in the folder like this. And indeed, uh, it has downloaded. Uh, and next, uh, there is a dry run command, which will just go through the installation and see. Uh, can we just run it and see what it will do. So, uh, we will try and check all the dependencies. And uh, you will see uh, this is unfortunately now a very, very long list. Because one of the dependencies is this R uh, package, which has in turn has many, many dependencies. Uh, and there is also. Um, I don't know if I managed to add this. Yes, so we can try this. Uh, if you maybe want to have a more shorter uh, listing, there's something called missing modules, and then it will not list all the dependencies, it will only list the missing ones that needs to uh, be installed uh, in addition. Um, and um, in fact, uh, there is only this extra dependency. We want to see that later. And this package itself. So all Jags depends on two things. It depends on these Jags, and then it depends on the Java. Uh, <laughs> These other listings here uh, has to do with uh, that we have made some modification to the toolchain installation. Uh, so these were never installed because we are using a custom UCX version. And the Java did not match exactly. There was a technical detail which uh, I might come back to if we have time. For now, uh, um, I will not say more about this. Now it's time to actually build. So far, everything looks good. And now, if, since we're sharing the login nodes, uh, I ask you to use this parallel option. And first, also, uh, I should say uh, you normally use the robot minus minus robot option. and, and then it will recursively find all the dependencies. And now please use, uh, not use more than uh, 
two threads, otherwise uh, this might go very slowly. So uh, let's start. Um, actually, uh, you see here now that it found this uh, dependency, Jax, which I guess, which I, uh, and uh, if I should follow my really the uh, advice for, we should have fetched that one also first, but now it's fetching, fetching it for us. Now to go through the steps, uh, so you can see. should uh, hopefully not take long time. Okay, so that's configuration step. So uh, while we are waiting for the build to complete, uh, I might say something about uh, the tool chain again. So go to here. So. The, what we used now to install was the uh, called the FOSS toolchain, uh, and here you can find a more detailed description uh, of, of the toolchain. So typically on our systems, we have this common, called common toolchain, and these two versions of there is one GCC-based and one Intel-based, and the GCC one is called FOSS, and yeah, the Intel one is called Intel. Uh, and they typically include a compiler, an MPI library, some linear algebra packages, and, and some uh, also linear, uh, I guess these are solvers, LAPAC, uh, and the fast Fourier transform library. So for the Intel versions, um, yeah, the, that's typically then the, yeah, the Intel MPI and the MKL, M M MKL, uh, math library. Okay, so started building. So uh, sometimes it can be a bit tricky to know uh, what's included in these tool chains. So here is a, a good can be a good table uh, to be uh, aware of. Because if you just have the name, say FOSS, which one did we use now? We used uh, the 2021B. If you go to this table, you can see which versions of the GCC is used. So it's 11.2 uh, and, MP, and MPI uh, and, and the other li uh, libraries also the versions. So this is might be useful if you know that you need maybe a particular version of the MPI or the libraries to see which uh, tool chain you might be interested in. For Intel, it's a little bit more straightforward. Um, but so for the 2021A, it's actually the same versions of all of them, but you should be aware of that the main version here might not match in particular for the MKL and MPI libraries. They might be not the same exact versions uh, as the main toolchain version is for various reasons. Okay, so it takes a while. 
confidently. So I think um, the reason for this is not that this is a very complicated build, but we are potentially many that sharing the system. Uh, and this is Python. And uh, sometimes the file operations takes an unexpected long time. So Dan, if I may ask, what is it taking time or what is it doing easy build for you? I don't know if it's, uh, I mean, uh, as I said, when I tried this yesterday, it took uh, a minute on my laptop and maybe two minutes mm. on Betsy, I think. So if you if you do it without easy build, how would you do it? For example, you might have to find where the source code is, then download it. Um, and you know, all the steps, uh, easy build is, I see that it's maybe automating. Oh. Uh, you're asking what I would do if I would install this manually? Yeah, without if you, if you avoid easy build and if you were to build it from source, um, what would the what would the so, steps uh, we, can, we could have a look at the easy config. <laughs> okay, maybe let's go follow the link uh, here. There's uh, something about the central EV repo. Okay, My, maybe we. Let's finish up now. Good. <laughs> okay, so now it was con this was uh, completed the first dependency, which was the RJAGs, and now the next one is the actual packages that we wanted uh, uh, to install. Um, yeah. Okay, so this might take some time. Okay, so let's. Uh, That went quick. <laughs> yeah, good. Okay, so I'm not sure how this goes for everyone else. If I should wait a bit before continuing or not. Uh, Dan, there is a question about how can we resolve issues when installing RJX. Uh, so if if you if you had some uh, issues while installing it, some fetching issue, where should you go to and uh, see what is the issue? There will be some output uh, to check on. Or well, uh, was it particularly about fetching the software or issues in general? So, uh, I mean, if if you, if you don't find the source the sources, well, <laughs> well, that depends on the case. The case, the most common thing is that maybe the source <clears throat> exists on GitHub or somewhere, and they, I mean, they, uh, <clears throat> they may might just have to renamed it to something different, and you would have to find out what the new name so, is. Um, so, Dan, this specific question is about, I'll answer that on the HackMD, it's about this TST system, which does not have direct internet access. Um, so when uh, downloading thing, there's a specific way that you should, um, you know, talk to the outside world. So that... Um, so, I mean, you could, of course, yeah. you could, of course, of course, download first on any computer, and then you could manually as we did before, we noted that the files ended up here in the... I think actually you can actually put them, but you could populate the sources you felt. Well, I think you could actually uh, specify. I'm not exactly sure there, but I'm. you can for sure, you could put them somewhere else uh, locally on the system and have easy build find them there instead of hemp fetching them from the internet. So one potential, potential workflow would then be to do the fetch command on, on the computer, which have, have internet connection, and then do SCP or I don't know, whatever, to, to get it on another system. Well, I mean, you could just if you could put the sources on a, on a, on a memory stick and, and move over like that. 
Yeah. Uh, other kind of issues, uh, is it uh, where uh, you look up about some hints, is the log file when you build this AC build um, module? If if you had some issues here, uh, is it the log files you are you are going to look first? To yes. Record? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Now, unfortunately, well, this uh, installation was successful, and I think it removes the log files. Yeah, it says even here that it removes them by default. Yeah. And um, uh, what should I say? Yeah. So, so uh, I mean, the. It's difficult. To, I mean, there's many things that can go wrong, and uh, sometimes they're easy to find. They, I mean, anything that could go wrong when you install, as usual, can go wrong here also, because uh, EasyBuild is really sitting only sitting on top of, uh, let's say, a make configure install or a Python package install or something else build system install, and anything that could go wrong normally with those installations could also go wrong here. But if you are using an existing easy build config from the main repo, it's a good chance that many other people already have used this to make installations. Uh, and in my experience, often this works. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, so where are, where are we now? Uh, now, finally, we get uh, a build. Um, so, uh, uh, yes, so let's just first look uh, in uh, what, what uh, we actually got something. Paste from here. So, as, as I said, uh, by default, things will end up in the dot local easy build folder, and now in the software, and then there's a folder called software, uh, and this looks good. Uh, I sh could have mentioned also that one thing that I typically often do uh, before doing an installation is to, to sh use the show config command like this. And here, then you can also see in particular you would, uh, okay, it doesn't say here, but you see that things end up here in that local easy build. Uh, and the install path it says here is pointing to uh, your local dot local easy build folder. Okay, now to actually use the software, uh, we need to put the uh, executable in the path, uh, and this we do uh, by loading a module. But first, uh, we have to add this folder module folder to uh, to the module path. You can do that by using the module use command, module use, and then the full path. And once again, this is now to be found under dot local is a build and modules, and we need to add the all at the end. So if I execute this now, this should be added uh, to my module path. You see that? It's so now it will look here first uh, for, for any modules. If you now try to do module build RJX. Uh, it should be found. And uh, uh, let's see. And now, okay, now we should also then be able to load, load the module. Module load RJX. Tab for tab. Um, so the module to command to will load all the uh, dependencies, if there are any other uh, modules. And then it will typically set the CPath variable to point to here, uh, to where the installation is, and maybe set uh, the LD library path environment variable if there is any. Uh, libraries that it has linked to. Uh, I really don't know anything about this software, so uh, uh, if we continue, and 
So then one question is that after you install, do you need the easy build module in your path as well when using it or is not needed afterwards? Uh, you don't need it afterwards. No. Uh, I, uh, Dan, I have another question about, mm -hmm. I, I, we installed uh, RJAX now, but uh, if I want to in, uh, have one more module, which is already available uh, as a module in this uh, global uh, system level, uh, then I should use the same tool chain to combat uh, with the RJAX because I'm already using it, if, right? Yes, if you want to have them loaded at the same time. Okay, we can actually we can do a, we should do a module list now to see what we have. And you see that there's quite a lot now actually loaded. And that's because this depends on this R, main R installation, which is big. It includes, I think, I don't know, actually more than 1,000 R packages that have been built from source. And uh, there's a lot of dependencies. And everything here now, now here, except this JAGs and the RJAX that we compiled uh, is coming from the system. Okay, uh, but yeah, as you might know, uh, the uh, so and also uh, these modules then since it's in the whole folder will only be available to you because of the restricted access here, and also uh, if you really are going to use more and if you were to install my, your own R version, you will quickly run out of disk quota. So, and if you want to share also with others in the group, uh, you probably don't want to have it in your home folder. So then, um, I guess the typical way will, do, will be to uh, install it in the project folder. Uh, so, and that's pretty easy. The only thing you really need to, to change is to, uh, to change the prefix install path. Uh, and um, I think I, I would only demonstrate this, or maybe on the command line. Um, so, uh, and if you don't know what projects uh, will fold, folder you have, you can use the deusage command for that. Um, uh, so for my my case, I probably would uh, actually, I don't have the training, I think, all this I see here now. Uh, I would probably use uh, and the NN9997 okay. Uh, folder, and then maybe some descriptive name. You, I mean, you can call it what you want, but ECB this may be good. So it doesn't uh, like this. Uh, now I think, in the interest of time, I will not actually do this installation, but uh, you can do like this. If I run the show config and then I add prefix, prefix uh, equals um, uh, path um, ops spelling show config. So now we will see uh, that uh, before things uh, were pointing to your local home folder, and now uh, things are going to end up uh, in this uh, uh, other folder. Uh, so as I said, uh, in the interest of time, I think we skip the installation here and continue with the next step. Uh, so you can try this yourself later. Uh, Oh, I should like to mention, as it says here, uh, everything that you can 
specify on the command line, you can also set by setting an environment variable. So, so in in this case, we could have defined and the and for every option name, the the environment variable is called is build capital letters underscore and then the the option name in also uppercase. Uh, we can, uh, and uh, I can try it. Let's do that. So if I do and then nine 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 seven K, and I tried this uh, show config again, but I don't specify actually the prefix. Um, it will still use the information from this uh, environment variable and uh, the installation will end up in the project folder. Okay, so how about uh, writing your own files? Uh, so from scratch, I think it's maybe difficult, it depends. Uh, but say uh, now for argument's sake that uh, we want to have this, this Ajax 4.12 that you just installed uh, with the more recent tool chain. Well, in reality, there is actually a 413 with this tool chain that probably that's what you would have used, but you know, for argument's sake for this uh, exercise, uh, uh, this is what we want. We want to use the new tool chain. And uh, then uh, it's not like you can just uh, try to uh, uh, specify the new. Uh, I mean, if this package not exists, uh, it's, Isabel is not smart enough to try to make substitutions and, and uh, you know, fetch things. So you need to do some manu manual editing. Uh, so, uh, okay, so it says here also, uh, if you don't find it on the system, you might look at the central repository that might be on something on the development branch there, for instance. Uh, but in our case, uh, it's not the case. Uh, so um, then you need to you have like to have some starting point. And in this case, uh, it's um, maybe, yeah, we'll start with the existing uh, build uh, config that we just used. Uh, so uh, Let's make a folder. Uh, and switch over to it. And uh, then there is the command called copy easy config. Uh, uh, aha. Okay. I should. Uh, Unset the easy build prefix because uh, I, I want to install locally now again. Uh, so it's also possible to uh, directly find the folder where, where this software is. So this should be a simple uh, uh, file operation. So short white text some time. Oh, okay, now it's complaining because uh, now it has copied the file. Uh, it complained, so I should actually have started by cleaning my maybe uh, environment from the 
from the since I loaded RVX module, uh, easy build normally don't like that you have uh, that order they have uh, uh, other modules loaded when it is ex executing. Should add that to instructions, maybe. Okay, and. Um, So in this case, uh, we also need uh, a, uh, a version of R, as I said before. Uh, and um, and we find uh, find this this version here. Um, so we're going to use that one. So we don't need to copy anything. And uh, we also need a version of JAX. Uh, so there is actually a version, newer version available, so we could use that one. And but in order for this to, uh, yeah, uh, for the sake of argument, uh, this is an example of that you might need to change several files in order for this to work in the end. So if we were to insist that we actually would need the particular version of, of, uh, of JAX, we, we wouldn't find it. Now there happen to be a version. So we're based using the one we have from before. Again. OK. Now it was quicker. I wondered if it did something checking before, because I had some other modules loaded. So if you have a lot of dependencies, this could be a lot of work uh, and, the match, and finding matching dependencies and so forth. But now, uh, luckily, our JAX only has two dependencies. And as I said before, like this tool chain is kind of a hierarchy of things. So. Maybe this was not correct. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think this is correct. So uh, some of the dependencies can also not necessarily depend on the full tool toolchain, but maybe only on the basic compiler, and then you can use packages or, or modules with uh, that matches those. Uh, okay. So now we need uh, to update uh, the toolchain version, and if we start with the JAX, uh, we need to open in the favorite editor the JAX. And in this case, it's the we needed we wanted to have uh, uh, the twenty two A instead. So uh, save that one, and then we need to update uh, RJAX itself. So here uh, we can actually see that it has which dependencies it has. So we needed uh, wanted the tool chain again, uh, and uh, we said we keep the JAX version, um, but we needed a different version for for the for the R. Uh, so that should be two one instead of one two four four two one instead of four one two. So save. Okay, and then we need to. Uh, this is important. Uh, we need to rename uh, the actual names of these easy configs matters. They should match the versions inside. So let's rename them. So and now we should be ready to build. And now uh, you should probably have this robot uh, command pointing to the folder where you have put your modified EC configs. I think it's enough actually. Uh, if you're standing, if you are in actually folder where they are, you don't need it. But uh, just to be sure, uh, I'm specifying the dot here that uh, means the current directory. So 
let's start that build. This might take some time again. Let's see if it's quicker this time or not. Last time did it take five minutes. So let's see if there's something else we can talk about. Uh, I can already mention, as it said, says in the end here, there's a note. So there are, are actually some built-in uh, easy build options that um, where you can make some modifications or versions and tool chains uh, by using command line options. Uh, and there's a link here. Uh, try, just try options. Uh, and if you want to do a lot of this, and actually if you have many dependencies, but well, you wanted to update only the the tool chain, maybe that's probably something that you could use. But for a beginner, uh, it's, I would say it's always nice maybe to use the and manual editing uh that's very straightforward um i can also mention um if we look at uh like the easy build for jacks here um so here you will say there is some specification of where the sources are fetched from so in this case, they are fetched from SourceForge. So maybe if you don't find the sources and they are somewhere else, you could specify uh, something else here on the source URL else. It's also possible uh, to uh, fetch from Git repos. Uh, uh, and if you were, say we had updated, we wanted to update to a new version here. Uh, then, so there's also this checksum. So everything that's downloaded, uh, uh, there will be a checksum, checksum uh, calculated, and you would need to update the, that one. You you can ask EasyBuild to ignore the checksum, but uh, th this might be a good thing to check. So it looks like it's finished the JAX. So I'm expecting the RJAX to be uh, finished pretty soon. And now I think uh, we already have used the module use. Uh, and then. Uh, I think I should be able to just do module today. Uh, and see, but now we have an updated version available. Um, okay. Um, so I think that's more or less it. Uh, I don't think we have time to try to install in the project folder. I leave that up to you. Yeah. Uh, any questions? Thank you, Dan. And uh, it was a good session. And uh, we have this good documentation. Anyone can check it uh, later as well. And when the videos are published, you can rewatch this uh, thing. Uh, um, Okay, there was a question about is there a partial cleanup step after EC build installation? If there is a cleanup step. Yeah. Uh, module purge. Ah, 
so so uh, easy build itself doesn't do i mean it will load i think modules when it does the installation but uh, it it will not uh, it will not load any modules that you have manually loaded so so um, as i said before uh, i sh i sh when i started to build earlier or copy actually earlier i should have removed i had loaded the rjax so every time you are using EasyBuild itself, this should be the only module that is loaded. Yeah, and the question is, is there a partial cleanup step after failed or aborted EasyBuild installation? That is not needed, right? Because when no. it is... Well, um, if the installation crashes, uh, it depends a bit on the installation. The logs should definitely be there, so you can look at the logs. Uh, typically, the build directory might still also be there that you can expect. Uh, there are, are options also, I think, for for uh, so that you can specify that the build directory should not be removed afterwards. So that yeah. might be useful uh, if you are debugging something. Yeah. Thank you. I th um, thank you, Daniel. So my name is Sabri Razik, and I'm located at the uh, University of Oslo. So I'm uh, uh, working in the English support as well, um, in addition to other duties. Um, today, what we will try to do is to go through some best practices when it comes to conduct and later on uh, HIP. Um, so this is not a um, hands-on session. So what I'm going to show you is not for you to follow live. So um, if you want to do that, you know, you're most are welcome. <clears throat> but the idea is that uh, I will show you where the documentation is located. I will show you where the, our, the best practices um, tutorial is located. And then I will try to go through uh, some of it live, um, which will give us a more realistic idea of um, how to do these things. So later on, you can help use the video uh, or you can use the material to try it out yourself. Uh, so what I've done is I only shared part of the screen here. And on the, and the, on the other side of the screen, I have the, uh, the tutorial. So the tutorial, you can find it uh, so the from the link that Dania had sent, um, the shared document. <clears throat> And um, to start the lesson, it will be very useful uh, if you give me, if you can give me some feedback on um, how do you use software on our HP systems. For example, do you use EasyBuild? Do you use containers? Do you use Conda? Do you compile your own uh, source code? Uh, if you can give me some idea here, which would we could. Um, 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 talk about um, some kind of a uh, more um, relevant. Um, I could be. I could try to be more relevant for your needs. So the way to edit is you click the pencil button and type here. Right. So I'm going to move this here. So you you can you may also have your um, documentation on the side if you wish on your uh, screen. <clears throat> uh, but I will not share it on the, on the on the Zoom session. So on this uh, shared document, there's this section for installation of uh, Conda, uh, which I kind of summarized uh, what I'm going to talk. And also we have the comprehensive documentation on the best practices, how exactly to do it. Um, so the um, idea is that the things I'm going to talk are more complementing to the documentation, which means that uh, the way it's expected to use is you should both uh, use both uh, side by side together, right? So it's not, um, 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 so if you get a, um, if you want to get a full idea of how to use this, this both these documents are important. So I will go to the software installation as uh, a user with Conda and you will land on this page. So this is the page I'm going to follow. This is a single page document and it's already on the internet and it's available for you. Uh, now I move this here a little bit. Um, then I'll start following that document. So the document itself is made um, 
using Saga as an example. Um, but I I also have a terminal open for, open to Saga, uh, but I'm going to do this on from um, just to just to make uh, make us aware and maybe a little bit slow down so I could change things uh, when needed. So the so in, uh, instead of giving examples for all the systems, the examples are uh, for one system. So we had to adopt accordingly. So there are uh, project accounts, the folder names. So we had to adopt uh, a little bit. Um, so uh, before we get, in, get started, uh, let me see what you are writing uh, about your software needs. So, okay, you use Singularity, uh, then some, some of you are using uh, tools um, installed with the easy, easy build uh, module. Anybody, anybody else, anybody, anyone in this audience actually use Conda? It will be very nice to know. Um, so in this um, uh, document, so the, so the objective of this lesson is that to give you some idea on how to use um, Conda because different people have different practices, uh, different way of using, uh, but for us to uh, provide support and for you to work best in a shared system, uh, we, we think this is the best way. This is not the only way to how to use it best, but this is a recommended way. So if you have more suggestions, changes, please uh, share that in the shared document so we can improve this lesson. Um, so before we get started, uh, I would like to emphasize that, you know, again, the supplementary document link from here and also uh, from what uh, Dan presented. So we have a uh, soft easy build as a uh, as software modules installed. So don't try to install Anaconda or Conda yourself or use the Anaconda or Conda environment for your uh, uh, for your research. Um, instead, load the module and create your own environment. <clears throat> and later on, I will talk more that you should not uh, modify your bash RC file, which means uh, everything that happens when you log into the system. So if you modify that, you'll get a customized environment, which is very hard for anybody else to um, replicate. So if you ask some help, we, will, we can't see uh, what's going on. So it will it, be very difficult to figure out what's going on. And when you modify your bash RC, the environment also could uh, transmit to the, uh, the batch system when you submit jobs, which might create unnecessary complications. Uh, and we also recommend not to use your home directory to uh, keep Conda because Conda would get big and large in number, which would uh, you, uh, eat up your uh, home directory quota. <clears throat> and also use uh, how to use prefix, you know, how to specifically tell where to uh, install things. Um, so let's see what you are, uh, what you have typed here. So yeah, it's mostly, yeah. Some people mm, use Conda, not on FPC. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so yeah, software modules, containers, uh, modify path yourself, which means you download something and you set up everything manually. Um, so the uh, so I'm not here to tell you uh, you know how you exactly do your work, how do you exactly want to load the software, uh, because that is very dependent on your uh, your uh, use case, you know what you're supposed to do. Let's say if there's a uh, something available as a container that you want to use, I'm not asking you to change that habit and move to Honda, but if there's a Honda that is the easiest to get your work done, um, then you know you could use it. Uh, but with that advice, our preference is that you first try the modules. Things are installed. So when Dan was installing software, you saw that there are so many steps involved, which means that it, uh, it downloads the source code, which means you know it's it's not uh, it's not the machine translated version. It's the source code, the human uh, version, and it downloads and it uh, we specify a specific set of compilers and all the libraries that we find best for our systems. And it get compiled, it converted into machine code. So when that process happened, when that uh, machine code conversion happens, the compiler, the the thing that uh, translate the human readable version to the machine readable version, made sure that it is optimized for the underlying hardware, which uh, which would also check which type of processor, the width of the registers, you know, um, how how would you optimally run uh, this kind of code. So those software installed in an optimal way. In addition, this installation 
um, would lead to errors if there are um, problems um, when during compilation, which means if a module is installed, which means that uh, the errors were sold in some way. Uh, so there'll be much less errors than um, uh, that you would see uh, if you um, get to get your source code all by yourself and you uh, try to compile yourself. And if you if you didn't um, notice uh, certain errors, it might cause issues later on. But these things go through all those checks and balances and make sure it's installed. And also this easy build uh, setup is used by many HPC systems. So when they make the recipe, the damn short, checking the checksum, doing some tests. So it's, it's, it's kind of matured. And when you install it uh, on your system, you get the errors early uh, because you know during the compilation, you will find some things. But when it comes to something like Conda, that's distributed as binaries, which means pre-compiled. So they have a set of uh, pre-compiled versions for generic Windows. They have the pre-compiled uh, versions for Mac. They have pre-compiled versions for Unix. So it's a generic version. So it's not fully optimized for your systems. But most cases, it might be enough for you. Um, so um, our advice in that sense is that uh, if you could use uh, the, the easy build modules that we have installed, uh, please do that. But if you, if you can't, then if you have to use Conda, please try to uh, follow uh, these steps. Uh, if you don't have even better way to do it. Um, so when to use Conda, these are some um, um, suggestions. So please write in HackMD if you, the, the, the shared document, if you have more um, experience with this. So if you're developing your own software and you want to set up your own uh, Python environment and your libraries, and you are also planning maybe to distribute your software as Conda package, then I would say it's okay to you know, use Conda as the first choice, you know, if that, that, is, if that makes sense. And if, there's, if the modules are not available in the systems, um, that if the module is not there and the easiest way is to get using Conda, yeah, it's, uh, you could use it. And maybe you found some instructions from your colleagues or maybe on the internet, it says Conda install this. That is the first step to get this running. Um, or if you, if the source code might be available. Uh, it might be, there might be enough instructions to compile it. But if it's already there and you just want to try it out, you know, just go ahead. Um, and then uh, we had to get uh, Conda in our system. So I will, uh, I'll try to um, type this uh, on the terminal and see. So I'm not, uh, I'm already logged in uh, to the from system. Um, the, um, uh, when you, so today, because this is the, this is sort of not the, not the interest section, I didn't uh, go through uh, how to log in and all. But I'm in uh, from, and uh, I'm on, on my home directory on from. Uh, then first thing I would do is to clean up the uh, anything that is loaded. Of course, I don't have anything, but you know that's a good practice to, to just to make sure explicitly clean these things. Then I will ask module avail. You know, list me the modules that uh, you have on uh, mini. Miniconda, for example. So we have Miniconda, um, some version here. So you could also ask Anaconda. Um, you could use Anaconda uh, if, you, if you want that. So both these can provide the Conda um, executable for you. But it's very highly uh, advised that you, you don't use uh, Anaconda to provide the packages or the Python for you. So the, use the Conda, Anaconda or Miniconda to get the Conda executable. Then you could um, build your own uh, environment. So if, you, if there's a updated version or you want to update this, uh, or if you want to update the Conda base environment itself, you can't do it because you don't have access. And I even I don't have access, that's a good thing. Because if we go and modify the base environment, which would change this environment for everybody else. So don't try to change these modules either. If you want to get upgraded, what we'll do is we'll fix an, a new module for you that you had asked from the support system. Then for this uh, mini conda is more than uh, adequate. I'm going to use module load mini conda module list 
So I see that the mini fonda is uh, loaded here. Uh, so after this loading process, it's very important you activate it. So the activation is that you have to uh, use the command source, and then you have this variable eb uh, root uh, miniconda and bin and activate. So this is not that um, you know obvious what uh, that you are doing, but after loading the module, you are always need to do that. So the exact command and the details are already already there in the tutorial. So you don't have to worry about like memorizing these things. You can refer to this uh, or write down in, a, in a, some config file um, that you're going to do it all the, all, all the time. Uh, but these things don't, don't try to include it in, in your starter script. For example, the bash RC that will this happen always. So if this always happens, then the conda is always activated. And it creates like some uh, not so clean environment. So this is when you are using it, load the module, activate it. So that is the first step. So I'm going to clear the screen. So I'll get uh, this terminal more up. So I'll have more real estate to show you. Okay. So now you see that uh, you know I loaded the module, and then uh, this base indicates that module is also activated. Just by loading the module load will not activate. So I have to explicitly activate it. Then before you uh, do anything uh, more, um, that you have to configure um, Conda, so it will it will um, not pollute your home directory, which means that the place where you land in, which has a very limited quota. Um, done, uh, show, show this dusage command. So if you type dusage and if, if it's getting filled, uh, we have found many uh, cases where this DUSH was uh, filling up because of um, the uh, Conda uh, directory. So which is, you could actually check if you already been using uh, Conda for a while. So this command is also, also have, uh, given in the tutorial. You could ask how much is Conda using on dot Conda. So I'm not using uh, you know, just the directory size. So it's not used um, anything. So some people, it might, this might result in gigabytes of data being there. Um, so then uh, the, um, when Conda installs things, it downloads um, temporary files from the internet and then it installs. So these temporary files, it keeps in a place called the Conda cache. The first thing that uh, we should do before even uh, issuing any Conda installation commands is that we should tell Conda where to place these files. So these files um, um, are, because we are going to do, we might be doing it over and over again. It's better that we use it as a configuration for Conda. For this, we have a file. So if you go to your home directory, there's a file called um, Conda RC. Maybe you have it. But if you don't have it, you can create it. So in, in my case, uh, I have this file. But if you don't have it, you can create it with this uh, file with the same name. Conda RC is the name, starting with a dot. That's very important. So let's see what my uh, file has. So my file has two things. It says this package directory, this is that Conda cache, the temporary files that we created, place them in user work, uh, work users uh, directory under my username and under a directory called Conda. So this directory does not count against your quota. So the, when uh, when things get bigger, this place get deleted as well. So cleaned up as well. So this is a good temporary location to keep your Conda, uh, temporary Conda files. And then I have another directory which is um, the where I should keep the Conda environments, the, the, the environments that we create. So this I have uh, directed to my project folder. This is the course project folder. Most of you might have access to this as well. Um, so one reason um, that it's here is, if I install it here, I don't know, let's see whether there's anything there. Uh, so that folder is not there yet, right? So in this directory is that, um, other, other users of the same project can use the environment, which means if you install something, others could also use it. 
Um, let me um, clear the screen again because I'm almost at the portal. Um, then what I did was I was I was showing my Honda RC file, and I'm going to uh, use this uh, directory. So this was not there. So I'm going to create it. Make directory mkdir, and I'm going to use that directory to keep the Honda files. Right. So now that directory is there. Yes. So. Um, Everything I downloaded, uh, everything Conda downloads, the temporary things, it will be kept here, which I should also explicitly clean if I need later on, but it will not it will not um, count against your quota. And then I know where the environmental directories are. And if you have it as a project, as a group, if you have some common understanding that all the projects ends up here, when one person install it, it will be available for others as well. And as uh, user support personnel, it's easier for us to, and more ethically uh, sort of correct to access this place than your home directory. So if it is there, and if you say, okay, now we can go and check these things as well. So the first thing is to create this uh, Conda RC file before doing anything. And if you don't have it already, if you just created it, then you have to log out and log in again to make sure it's uh, getting uh, recognized. Um, then uh, we'll see how to um, create a um, Conda uh, environment you know, in the, using these uh, settings. So if you remember what I did first, it was, uh, I loaded the uh, module, uh, the, the Conda module. Let me see whether I have it in my history still. So I can summarize it a bit. Yes, so I, I loaded this module. I'm going to place a hash in the uh, front so it will not execute again. I'm just want, I just want to show you. Uh, then I did the activation part. This also there's a hash, so it will not happen again, like, you know, because I've already done it. So I loaded the module, I activated it already. And I also have a Conda RC file. So if you have these three things set up, um, it's it'll, it'll, it'll avoid many pitfalls. So these three setups, uh, I would recommend highly that you set up before you start going on installing things. Um, then uh, what we do is, let's say, if you want to create a, a Python um, environment for your work, uh, you could simply create uh, with the commands that I'm going to show you. So conda, create, you know, it says, you know, create the environment. And I'm, I want Python uh, 3.10. And I will also say that the, the, the project directory I was uh, referring to, if you remember um, this directory, where the environments are. So I, I will also mention that use install here, prefix, and this location. So everything that will be installed would end up there. So I'm explicitly saying, so I'm not and uh, letting Conda assume anything. So I'm, I, I'm asking to create Python and place it there. So I'm going to press enter. It will go and check. Uh, it will go and check the Conda, uh, the package repositories to see first a, a pre-compiled version of this package is available for you within the default channels that's suitable for your system that you are here. Um, okay, so here, that's a, a good uh, warning, it said. Because I, I specified uh, this conda, I didn't give it a name. So it'll, it'll be in this place. So I would say, no, I, I don't want to uh, use that location, but that's a directory already there. But I want to use uh, maybe some, something that easier to locate, uh, Python uh, 3, 10. I'm going to do, uh, name it like that. So if we are already there, uh, something, uh, an environment with the same name, it'll, it'll check and tell you. Sometimes you might want to upgrade it. So upgrading is another process. Uh, okay, so we found all the uh, Linux uh, 64 versions, and then I will say yes to download and place it in that uh, project folder. So now uh, what happens is, um, I will move this uh, tutorial uh, to your shared screen a little bit. So this is what I did. Um, I did this um, Conda install uh, with the prefix. Uh, after activating it, and then I gave it a name. Uh, but after the install, I will show you how to list environments as well. Um, if it is more than one package, then you might 
lose track you know uh, you know your colleagues might not know uh, what exactly been installed so the best way is that instead of just directly um, write, uh, executing this um, asking to install these packages you could write down the um, packages that you need and the channels that they come from i will i will show talk something about the channels a uh, little later on uh, and write them in a file and then go for the installation so this best practice, how to exactly do it and more details are linked from the top of the page and also from the documentation uh, link that I showed you in the first um, document that Dania shared. Share. It's, it's very explicitly explained. So the reason that I did not do that as the first thing is that I, 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 want, to, I want to show you that if it is only one package, let's say SAM tools or uh, some, um, um, package that you found to install, you know, it's more or less that is the practice that you, you will not go and create only for one package a file and then install it. So if it is one package, I would, for realistically speaking, although it's not the best practice, it's okay to go and install it. Uh, so it is uh, installed now here and then uh, you can uh, use it uh, by activating it. Konda says how to activate it. We'll do for the activate and step in a moment. Before that, I will tell you, you know, if we had to do follow best practices uh, how, and you know, the uh, best reproducible way for, for maybe your colleague, you want to share it with your colleagues or maybe your future self, which means that in another two years, you might not know what you did to get this running. It's better to write this in a summary file. So after installing this, Conda and list, if you list what's installed, it will tell you two things. One thing is because because my environment is very clean, so I, I cleaned up, so it will be easier to uh, show these things. This is the thing we just installed and the base. And don't use the base for anything, which means it will have very old file, old packages, and it's not upgraded, so it's frozen uh, when it was installed, and you are not supposed to use it. So even the Python version in that we don't use it for uh, our research work. We we we, we get the uh, Python on our uh, environment. Uh, I will show that when, when we activate it. And then, uh, you know, as I said uh, moments ago, that the best way is not to directly issue commands on the terminal, maybe write down in a file, or maybe even better if you can uh, write down something and version control it so you know what uh, happens, what, what you changed. Um, I can um, do that um, example as well. So, where I, I'm in this folder. Uh, I'm going to my, uh, okay, maybe I can do this in the project folder itself. So you can also have a look. Uh, projects in 9970 ls cd, I place it inside the Conda directory. Uh, examples. Mm. So uh, actually, so if you want to, uh, because for you to locate this easily, I'm going to place this example file here. But it's better not to keep uh, you know, other things inside the place where you uh, install Conda environments because when Conda try to list things, it will also go and ch check these folders to make sure that um, you know, they are not in a uh, Conda environment. So the listing might take uh, slightly long if you have a lot of things in the uh, place where you keep environments. Um, so then what I do is I will uh, I'll go back, Conda examples, CD back, CD Conda examples. And I'm going to create a file here called, uh, you know, same thing I'm going to install Python 3.10. Um, yeah, from, you could, you could just be descriptive here. There's no um, um, big ruling, but mostly it's called requirement.yaml. So it's a it's a format of this file, so it's 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 the the by extension doesn't make it a YAML file, but it's very easy to identify. So you could just call it requirement file as uh, mentioned as well. But for me, it will be easier for me to locate. So I'm going to use that file. So in this file, uh, I I should have a name uh, for this. Um, so for the sake of um, so getting things a little faster, what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
paste some of the details here and I'm going to explain. So this is the name. Uh, this will be like if you specify a prefix, um, this doesn't matter much, but you know, it's good to have a name. And the channels, uh, I promise that I'll show you the uh, more details about the channels in a moment. Here it says defaults. And here it says Python 3.10, the thing I installed before. And in, in addition, I need NumPy, Pandas, and SciPy without specifying versions. The reason I didn't specify versions is that if I, if I do specify a version, I should know which version of NumPy uh, matches with Pandas and SciPy. Uh, and uh, those are available as pre-compiled binaries in the default channels. So I made it uh, more relaxed for Honda to figure it out. Uh, earlier, because it was only one environment, I directly showed the command. But here, because there are four things, I'm going to have it in a file. So later on, I will remember what was it about. Uh, I'm going to clear the screen again to go up uh, in the video a little bit. Uh, let me um, print that file again. So this is the file. So this example is there in the tutorial as well. So again, you should uh, do the same step every time. Um, load the module and then uh, activate the module. So because I already done this once, I made I had a hash in the front, so it will not happen again. It, it's not a big deal if it happens again, but I didn't want to uh, I want to avoid any complications. So load the module, activate it. And then uh, as before, you would say uh, Honda, but here in, 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 before the create, you have to say end and create. Uh, and then the prefix, uh, prefix. Um, so what was the prefix? I, I forgot uh, what was the prefix was. So I'm going to um, um, comment it out because I'm going to uh, not execute it and come back again. The fold I created was cluster projects and then 9970 Conda. Okay. This was, um, no, it was a seven, seven zero conda. Okay, this was the place I kept the Python 3 um, uh, earlier, um, um, the, the environment I created directly. And here I'm going to use the same uh, prefix. Uh, I'm going to use this one here and maybe call it Python. 310 from file. Um, so you could be more descriptive when you create these environments, uh, but I, I, I'm going to use that name to, so it'll be easier for me to uh, locate them now uh, during the, what I'm showing. Okay. So what happened? Here yes, is another error uh, that, you know, when you, when you do these things, uh, you might see uh, errors. So what Conda says is that this environment was uh, that that file uh, was not found, uh, which means that it was looking for a file, which I forgot to mention. So then I had to say file, um, and then I had to mention uh, what was the name of the file that I created. This one, uh, and actually when you use prefix, you don't you don't need to uh, specify the equal sign session, but it should be okay. Let's see. Then you press enter. So if you read the error, um, it's um, it gives you the details about um, what went wrong. So it, it might be very useful when something goes wrong. Spend few seconds, minutes maybe to see what it was complaining about. In this case, it was just, I, I forgot to mention the file. <clears throat> so it will go and uh, figure out again. This time, not only Python 10, but also the NumPy, Pandas, and the other uh, packages that I asked it to install. And it will also find the matching versions. And it will make sure it will download the correct binary for the system that we are logged in now. <clears throat> um, OK, so it's it's created. So I could ask a module. Uh, let, let me go up in the screen a little bit. Clear. Uh, Conda in list. Now it says three, the base that we are not going to use, and the one we created earlier, and the one created with the file. So in the same location um, as before. So how to use a module? So let's say if you want uh, Python, um, this this version that you will use, let's check what Python version is there now. 
um, version. It is 3.11 actually uh, we have, and let's see where it's loading from. So it's loading from this Miniconda environment, and there might be packages that's uh, loading from that as well. So try to avoid using it, which means that if the admin go and change this Miniconda, then you'll get a different version, which might conflict with your existing packages and it's very hard to reproduce. So not don't use this. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to uh, ask to activate it. So before activating, again, uh, the earlier steps, don't uh, you have to remember what was the steps. Um, you load the module and then you source it to activate the conda. What was that command? Yes, this one. So these two should have been done uh, in advance before loading it as well. Um, then uh, well, what you do is um, if you um, um, see the um, so the details so this source like the, the folder I mean and this base which means that the conda is uh, already uh, activated um, um, the um, the environment that we are going to use, we should activate it before you, we use um, conda, activate, and then we'll activate this one. And then it'll go and activate. Now it, you see that that environment is in the beginning of the uh, terminal cell. Um, if I make the text little, no, I don't want to make the text smaller so it'll be hard to find. So I'm in this uh, environment now. So if I ask Python version, it's 3.10.13 because I didn't specify the subversion. It didn't uh, it's installed the 3.10. And then if I ask um, where it's loading from, it's loading from this conda environment I created in the project directory, not, not the base environment, which means the best practice that you were uh, promoting. So this, uh, how to do this is, um, is there in the uh, tutorial as well. So all these steps, every every time, load the module and activate before you do anything. And then uh, uh, when you, after you install it, you can activate it uh, to use the module. Uh, because just, just not, not the module, the conda environment. Um, so the one thing to avoid is that, let me, uh, let me go here um, and maybe Mm, yes. So let me look out from uh, from. Uh, I'm going to log in. Log in. So I'm going to um, um, log into from first. Uh, I didn't want to share that just in case um, that I don't type my authentication on this recording. Uh, there are some things that you should. Um, um, try to avoid uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the meantime. So one thing is to avoid using the base environment. So if you can open up the HackMD and uh, may inform us a little bit about whether you know what base environment is or whether you use it or uh, whether you agree or not that, you know, this uh, with this uh, statement. Uh, Sabri, then uh, there is a question number three that would be interesting for you. Mm. Uh, which is? Which is having uh, the base environment whenever logged in. Yeah, so that is highly not recommended. Uh, one thing is it will it will uh, it will it will contaminate whatever you do. So it will be um, very hard to reproduce things if you do, and it will also be very slow. So, so there is no other way mm, to autom automate. Uh, the base environment whenever logged in, right? Rather uh, than no, putting should, in the bash uh, No, like you should not do this. So you should always follow what I uh, what I did. You know, load the module and activate it when you can, and deactivate it afterwards. Uh, which I uh, maybe didn't so. So the um, let me try this one. Because I had to set up some authentication, I did it wrong. So I mean, I mean, from again. 
sorry clear on from so let's say this is a different day or maybe you know in the future uh, day that you come in and you try to do the activate conda activate this it will send conda not found so that is the best way that you should log in conda should not be found when you log in and then if you remember that um, i uh, loaded the module and then after loading uh, what should i do what you let, let's activate try to activate it again yeah. Yeah. after after loading it then it will go and it will say that your base uh, environment the conda is not active uh, issue this so the best practice is that you should not do that so we have uh, described it here uh, on um, yes so it will it will say uh, uh, conda in it and please don't do that and the reason for that is very well described in the documentation with more examples and the consequences that will have uh, result in these things so more details are there so if so if you get that message and if it is not getting activated that is because you didn't follow the second step which is um, the source uh, step that i showed this one so before you go and like modify and destroy everything do this one and then load again and it will be loaded so that's how you do it um, then um, if you do it in a job so the so mostly we do it in a jobs right so the first thing um, that um, you should uh, do when 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 you want to do in a job is to create the environment in a login node so don't try to create environments the things i did up to now uh, conda create or conda in create inside a job one thing is uh, conducts sometimes get can get uh, locked you know, and, and you know trying to figure out what exactly to install it could take a long time it will just waste resources and the compute nodes might not be able to fetch if it is not properly set up so it's best that you install it on the compute node so which is you know uh, we ask people not to use compute nodes uh, sorry the login nodes for operations but in this case i, I would recommend the easiest way and see the errors up front is the is use the computer after you create that you could use it in the in a job script so here the job script is there uh, so you specify your um, job parameters as you would do normally and then um, uh, it's, it's always best practice that uh, you purge the module which means um, um, you have to um, clean up anything that's loaded and if you already have Conda loaded in your uh, bash RC, then that might uh, have to be cleaned as well. So it's best that you don't uh, modify your bash RC so you don't have to take that step. So that step is not um, defined here. So if you are already active uh, loading it, then after module purge, you also need to do a Conda deactivate. Uh, so that's uh, not bad practice. And then you load the module as you did before. And that sourcing step, if you don't use this source step, then you'll get this init. Uh, Conda will recommend you to do the issue the init command in order to um, activate it. Uh, and then you activate it as before in the terminal that we did, but do, this time you do it uh, inside the job script. After that, you can check the Python version and then you can execute your uh, Python commands or the Python scripts that uses the uh, environment. So after that, there's no need to um, kind of deactivate or anything because when the job ends, it gets canceled. So that that shell that the job runs is not um, available for after the job. So no need to clear it. But if you are um, on a, um, activate some environment, I what I do is I log out and log in. But you can also do conda uh, deactivate. On that deactivate and then you come to the base environment and then you do deactivate again and you're out and then you can use the module purge um, just to clean up if you want to use some other environment for example but for this, this step uh, is uh, not needed in a job script because just get destroyed that shell afterwards it's just looking it's as if you looked out and log in again let me see the 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 shared document. Mm, okay, definitely a conda user. Okay, uh, 
Yes, so the, that I showed you how to uh, do that. Yes. Uh, and if you have, uh, because uh, I didn't go through the, the best practices, um, the, the documented, so this is documented that LinkedIn, this describe more explicitly, go into more details on why this is uh, you should do and why, how do you create an environment file and you know what would be added if you do combine it, you know that kind of things. So um, because uh, the sake of simplicity, I'm going to I uh, I'll stick to this one. Uh, Dania, how many how much time do we have left now for the? Discussion? We have twenty minutes. Uh... But mm. we thought to have a Q and A, but I think we you can have twenty minutes for the pip. Yeah, no. Um, so the pip also we could follow the same um, kind of principles that um, we load the module. We don't use the Python in the module. We create our own environment in a location that's shareable, and then keep it uh, away from the home directory. So those things are more or less uh, transferable for pip as well. So using uh, that also linked from the front page. And the difference between, do you know that, uh, so if you get NumPy from PIP or NumPy from Conda, what would be the difference? For Unix systems, for example, on Saga, if you try to install NumPy, PIP will actually compile it for you. But Conda will bring down a compiled version. Uh, so the PIP is only for Python packages, Python package distributor from PY, PI, you know, where that is. But for Conda, it's, it's a, it's not only Python. So if I go to Anaconda, um, Anaconda org, right? So this is the uh, package, uh, one place to find. If you ask NumPy, it will give NumPy because it's a Python package. And there are different version of it. And the Conda Forge, you have the 126 version. And if you ask something, you know, there's this bioinformatics called SAM tools, for example which is not Python related. Then it will also give samples, but here it says Bioconda. So here it will, you can also find out how to install it. So when you're installing it, um, you need to use Bioconda as the channel. So these channels we didn't uh, talk much about today um, because we only uh, was showing the best practices. So in addition to, um, what you install, let's say if it is SAM tool, if I get the same uh, command again, what would be the difference would be um, create, uh, yeah, I'll get the, um, create the directly what I created because that would be the mostly the way that you would install some other tool, not, not create a file in this case because it's something uh, very direct. Uh, let me, well, it's called samples, okay. And if I ask, create samples in a environment called samples, it will go and check. <clears throat> um, it figure out the platform and it said it didn't find that. I can't find it. So in addition to, um, I'll clear this again. Then you have to say that get SAM tools, but from Bioconda. Then it'll go and uh, check that channel. So in, in my uh, that the Conda that dot Conda RC file, I have not specified channels. You could also specify channels um, if you don't want to specify all the time. But I prefer that I do this in the YAML file. Uh, because then it will be easier for another person to understand what's needed. So I'm not going to install it now. So Conta is for not only uh, Python, but also for other packages. But if you go to Python package manager, here, yeah, and if you ask NumPy, <clears throat> it will give you NumPy, but if you give SAM tools, It's also gives samples for some reason. <laughs> so maybe it's some Python. Uh... Uh -huh. Okay. So it actually has samples. That was not a uh, good example. Um, let's ask. Uh... So the so the idea is this will be a uh, Python version of it. It's not the, the, the binary that's going to download, but you could also go and check uh, things. 
Um, so if you find a package name that's not available in Py, uh, not exported to Python, so these are sort of APIs for that tool. But here in the in the Conda, you have the tool itself. Um, and then um, uh, I go to the uh, section where I was talking about Python packages. Uh, and then what you do is you do the same uh, module load as described here. And then um, like the, the equivalent of Conda create is Python create environment with my name. I mean, uh, the, the name of, not my name, the name of the environment I got to go to create. You could just try it out. Uh, so when you uh, copy pasting these things, first thing that you would uh, do is that because this might this tutorials might get older, uh, the time passes, and then you might um, we might do changes. First, ask module avail Python. What are the Python three modules I have? Okay, I have uh, three thirteen two for uh, three eleven here. I lo load that module purge as before. Module load. <laughs> so now I have Python. Um, which Python? And then if you want to install NumPy, for example, we can't go and modify this environment. So you need to install it in your own environment. One thing is this is installed centrally. So if we do have the permission to modify it when you install NumPy, then it will create a um, difficult situation for other users. Uh, I will go to my home directory, uh, directory so I can find it again. Uh, and should I install it here, Dania? What would happen? It'll it'll use my home directory quota. Um, yeah. So it's best that you uh, go to the project directory. So I, I although I created the directory, I'm going to move that directory to. Um, let me go back one step first. Um, I will, um, yeah, to show this example, I'm going to, I'll use it here. Um, but if you install things there, it will, it will be counting against your uh, home quota. So now the module is loaded, there's Python. Then what I will do is I'm going to um, create my, uh, of the virtual uh, Python environment, not virtual environment, Python environment. I copy paste it from the, the material itself. So it will create um, this environment. So it's going and it will checking and it will uh, create an environment for you. So the advantage of creating this is that, you know, that will be there. Just by, by creating it, it's not used. Uh, let me go up a little bit, clear the screen. Unless, so it's created here then you have to um, activate it as before in the job script as well. And then um, uh, when you're using it for test on the login node as well, uh, you have to <clears throat> activate it. So the activation uh, script is always inside being activated. Now you came here and if you ask which Python, it will be your Python uh, that not from central environment, then you can install, um, yeah, pip. Uh, so I will ask which pip as well. It's also your pip, so you can upgrade it as you wish if, if you want it. Pip install uh, numpy, for example. Then you don't have to say that to install it with the dash dash user, for example, uh, to install the user directory. This will go and install inside your um, Python. Now it's also asking to upgrade Python. That also could do in the uh, new environment, not in the base environment. So if I load Python, um, okay, let's ask which Python, which Python, and let's load NumPy, Python um, import, import. NumPy as NP, print where it is loading from. As you can see, it's loading from a very specific location. 
that I created. So it's uh, um, it it will print even uh, better the, the the location here uh, with the full path. So I could even delete it. So if 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 I see some errors, if I don't I just want to get rid of it, you could safely delete this and uh, fade back. But here as well. If it is just one file, it will make sense. But for your uh, reproducibility, um, you could also create a file with the requirements as described here and write down the uh, requirements in a file and ask people to install those requirements. So this way, you could also recreate the environment uh, later on very earlier, very, very easily. You could share it. And also you could um, integrate it in some automation. For example, if you are aware of how uh, Git works, so Git, you have CI CD pipelines, for example. Then if you want to use this same setup in an environment or create a container with this environment, it's easier to use a requirement file in order to reproduce uh, reproduce later, create containers and you know, uh, use in um, continuous integration pipelines. <clears throat> Uh, I think that's uh, enough discussion uh, on this topic, uh, Dania. So the thing is that I, I don't want to uh, force people, okay, you know, this is the best way that you should use HPC. So the best way HP use HPC is that HPC helps you for your research. Uh, the, the, the technical perfection might not be um, um, always achievable, but it's always good to follow best practices, especially for reproducibility. Uh, and the ends for sharing science. So if you have to use Conda, please go ahead and use it. But please keep in mind that if you already have a module, try to use that first. And if you use Conda, the support that you can get is less. The reason is that it's something that you install and it comes from a pre-compiled set of binaries from the, the channel that you get. Uh, so the software support, the software team itself is not responsible for the conda environment that you install. But that does not mean that you are excluded from support. You can ask for support. We'll try to provide it. If it is in a project folder, we'll be more comfortable to you and just check it for you. If it is in a home folder, I really don't like to uh, go and check things. For privacy reasons, as also to, you know, we could also do some mistakes, you know, that things could mess up your environment. So if you place in the project folder, as we described, you could also have a, a look. Uh, but the support you get from the software team is not as if you use a module because module uh, is something that we are responsible for. Um, yes, so Dania, um, is there any uh, questions that uh, all here? Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. so we can get some feedbacks and, and if you want, you know, we could stop the recording and have a camera discussion if you want that. Yeah, thank you, Sabri. And I would uh, like to uh, thank you and Dan for today's uh, lessons. Uh, I am sure the people, uh, the participants appreciate this. Um, I really would like to have your feedback for the day. Uh, one thing, uh, one good thing about today, one thing we should improve next time. This is very important for us uh, for the next upcoming uh, series and upcoming training events. Um, Sabri, can you go a little up on the uh, first uh, heading of the page? Uh, just want to remind you, there are upcoming uh, code refinery workshop uh, next week, uh, start next week. It's about version control and much more. You can check uh, the workshop page and it's, uh, it's six half days uh, spanning um, from next week to the week after that. I highly recommended it. And we have upcoming training at Andres, uh, one in April, that is HPC onboarding. And the next series of this uh, best practices will be in May because we have other activities, training activities in April. And during that time, we will discuss about the file transfer and the storage cluster net, uh, Andres storage cluster net. That will be on May 23rd. You are welcome to join. And this, um, uh, this recorded version will be published uh, most likely this week itself, and you will get an email from me. I highly appreciate your feedback and ap I highly appreciate your participation. And thank you for your participation and thank you for your uh, for our instructors uh, for today. I will stop recording, and you are free to ask questions uh, to your inst instructors and our end staff here.